I'm Stephen Brown from Halton High School. I teach pre-AP English 1 and regular English 1 in the Bossier Parish School System. Uh, my passion for teaching is for helping kids understand that their learning is not confined to these four walls, but that it's, it's anywhere they go. And there are places and locations and cultures in the world that I want them to be able to experience and know that they're out there. And so the learning just starts here, but it expands far beyond that. I want kids to be pushed and challenged in my classroom. So that's a passion in that kids learning how to solve problems uh, because they'll be solving problems the rest of their life and in many forms and just starting here is just one way that I can do that. I give them resources and strategies to hopefully do that and we use them so much to where it just becomes hopefully routine for them where down the road they utilize those resources and strategies to solve problems of any kind because they'll be doing that for the rest of their lives. To help with that I organize trips as a global ambassador for citizens to experience other cultures in the world to Europe um, I've taken many students on those trips and to watch them grow uh, when they experience other cultures, other people, um, other learning opportunities, solving problems, because that it comes with that territory, it's amazing. And when they come back and to see them utilize that in this classroom, and then when I see them in grades beyond me in the hallways and how they're facilitating with that learning, it's amazing. And that's what I'm here to do. In this particular lesson you're going to watch today, this is the beginning to the introduction of the Odyssey. I'm utilizing the Tier 1 Learn Zillion curriculum from the Bossier Parish School Board. And the objectives of this lesson are for students to cite thorough textual evidence and to write an objective summary as we look at the invocation to this epic. They're going to be working in collaborative groups and the teams and groups have been organized specifically and strategically for some stronger students with weaker students and for the best fit for personality um, engagement. I stress from day one the importance of those students talking and collaborating with each other because when a student hears another student's thinking as they discuss, they grow so much from that. It's not just listening to me. They need to learn from each other and we do that a lot. And I stress the importance of, of the benefits of that and so uh, I walk around move around and I I get down on their level and I give input and feedback but a lot of it comes from their interaction with each other and I, I stress to make sure they understand that I'll be able to check for understanding and goal attainment at the end because they'll be turning into me the objective summaries and I can give feedback on that when we move forward in a future lesson very good so you're gonna cite evidence okay for the answers to the activities you're doing okay and the third one miss Stacy would you read that one please Determine a theme or essential idea of a text. Analyze in detail its development over the course of the text, including how it emerges and is shaped and defined by specific details. Provide an objective summary of the text. Very good. So we're going to write an objective summary of the opening lines of the Odyssey, Okay, this epic. Now before this, you have already read a couple of short stories, Half a Day and A Worn Path, and we also read and explored Ithaca, a poem that shares similar themes with the Odyssey. In fact, you had to go through and find the connecting theme with all three of those texts, the two short stories and the poem, which you started this illustration project for. And those themes will continue through the Odyssey. But this is the anchor text for this unit where we find the connections of this theme to where at the end you write your culminating writing task, which I'll talk about in just a minute. Okay? You also determine how the author used devices to convey theme, like allusion to the Lystragonians and the Cyclops. Okay? And so we're going to explore the major features of the epic, what makes it an epic? We're going to read and annotate the invocation of the Odyssey, which introduces us to characters and conflicts and themes that are present throughout this text. So before we get to this, I want y'all to look over here, okay, on this green board, just to refresh you. This is our end goal, this culminating writing task. We're going to write an argumentative essay in which you determine whether the journey or the goal was more important to the development of Odysseus' character and a theme from the epic. So this is the starting point to get us to this, okay? And we're going to use evidence along the way, or you're going to have to use evidence along the way to prove whichever side you're taking. The journey develops his character most or his goal. Let's talk about what we're going to do today. A lot of it's collaboration with you and your classmates. So it's important that you remember your Thinking out loud when you discuss these things is so key to your classmates learning, okay, in this class. It's not just me talking. It's you and your classmates and you hearing their thinking. That's a big part of it, okay? So don't forget that. Um, 
Let's see. Just start at the top of the page. Read that first set of directions, that first paragraph for me, please. Uh, Chloe Hanks, the features of an epic. Read that for me. An epic is a long book-length poem that tells a story about a hero. The ancient poet Homer wrote book the Iliad, mm -hmm. the story of Greeks defeating the their enemies during the Ten Year Trojan War, and the Odyssey, the story of the Greek king Odysseus, to move. Ten year. Ten year journey home to Ithaca. The following characteristics are just some of the distinctive elements of the epic genre. Very good. So one one. One, one piece of an epic is that it typically starts in the middle of everything, in the middle of the story. When we open the Odyssey and Odysseus' journey, it's going to be in the middle of his journey, not the beginning. Okay, We're going to have to go back and figure out, well, how did he get to this point? So that is an element of the epic. So we're going to do some activities. Activity one, reading and annotating the invocation. All right? we're going to, I'm going to read first, and all I want you to do is follow along. Okay, so look at the where it starts in the box below the one, two, three. Okay, here we go. Just, just follow along. Sing to me of the man, muse, the man of twists and turns, driven time and again off course, once he had plundered the hallowed heights of Troy. So that's your first read. We get so much in that invocation that this story unfolds for, and that's what you're going to annotate and dig into just a little bit, okay? almost forgot your dad joke for the day. Why are books about anti-gravity the best? Because they're impossible to put down. <laughs> All right, back on track. Sorry, I give a dad joke every day. Um, for your first reading, define the terms that have been bolded for you. I need one team member to pull out their phone. One team member only. Decide who that is, okay? I want you to look at the bolded words in the text. Take five minutes. One of you pull out your phone. Look at definition, all of you come up with a synonym and write it down, okay? Now, don't just look up synonyms. Look up the definition as well because you may not know what the synonym means. And make sure you're using the same part of speech. You can do like praised. Because it's like made holy. Oh, no. Would you the same? C-A-P-G-I-V-A-T. Terry, like, that, that lives where? That's right, so of nature, right? So a mythical nature creature. Okay, that would work. So, you should, so take the definition and turn it into a synonym if it doesn't give you a direct one. Okay, because nymph is one of those like that. Okay, boiling, sure. Like his blood is boiling. He's so, so angry. He raised Josh. I'm gonna go for it. Oh, I mean, I could tell you where it is back there, but I really don't want you to find it on your own. Remember, make sure you want the Greek sun god, because there's Roman and there's Greek and two separate things. That's right. Because they're the same god, but the Romans called them one thing, Greek called them another. I'll take a volunteer. Let me hear for Muse back there. What did you find, Avery? Uh, the daughter of Zeus. Daughter of Zeus. With your partner, with your teammates, I want you to complete the third step for the annotations. Let me just read those directions and explain exactly what you'll do, okay? Here's how you will do this. One team member reads a question, and then the team discusses that question, and you develop a consensus answer for that question, and you all write it down. Use complete sentences for every answer. Then once that team member, once you're done with that question, the next team member clockwise will read the next question and you do the same process. All right, I'm going to give you nine minutes. Go. Decide who does the first one and just go clockwise. Who do you think is describing? Who would be in this story, the Odyssey, the man of twists and turns? Muse. No. Nope. No. Nope. Say it again. Odysseus. Odysseus. Okay. Odysseus. They're addressed, look at how they're using, sing to me of the man, muse. It's like, sing to me of the man, oh, like Mr. yes, as if they're talking to that person to tell the story. This is a reference to the person they want to hear about 
Odysseus. Does that make sense? Describes Odysseus. But what is the question? What does the first number one, what's it tell you to do? What's the first part of that thing? So what does that mean? It is describing Odysseus. Here's a man who puts the turn. What does that mean? All right, look at number, look at number two. Did y'all answer number two? Because it's not just the highlighting. It's a part about what's the effect of what you highlighted on you, the reader. So look at what you highlighted. What's oh, like the how it affects yes, us? Yes, how it affects you, the oh. reader. What effect does what you highlighted have on you? What's it make you think? What's it make you feel? Nice job. Look at your teammates and say, hey, nice job. All right, look at your next activity on your handouts, okay, the objective summary, okay, and listen, I've got a specific way I want you to do that, so listen carefully. This I want you to do independently, okay, so you've read it together, you've discussed it together, but this I need you to do independently so I can check your understanding. Now, we did one of these already for Ithaca, so it's not a new process, but I've got the questions up on your handout I want you to do this with. First, Answer each question that's on that handout as one complete, simple sentence just for that question. So the first question says, who is the text about? Just answer that question. This text is about whom? Odysseus. This text is about Odysseus. That's what you write on the lines below. Next line, answer the next question. Next line, answer the next question. Just give one answer per line. Then, once that's done... I want you to combine those simple sentences into your summary with fewer, more complex sentences where you can put some of the information together. Let that guide you. Some of it you have to infer. Some of it's not directly right there, but think about what's going on and you can come up with an answer, okay? And then combine it, condense it. Write fewer sentences and put some stuff together. For instance, what's happening? Think about his journey, okay? Where is not necessarily a you know a formal proper name place so basically the draft is on the paper the final product what okay it's a does he do, do you get the the assumption do you get the feeling that he left Troy after fighting and got home to his lovely wife in, at Ithaca without any problems no. okay why what in this text makes you feel that didn't happen I don't know. <laughs> well that's what it's asking okay what did what does what does this little bit tell us he had he we know he had to go through and is still waiting for him when he even gets home uh, I don't know well think about it so it says why is there a problem well you know the problem because you, I just asked you, do you think he got there without any problems? No. Okay. So there's a problem because he didn't get home right away. Yeah. Okay. Why do you say that? What in this text lets you know he didn't get home without any problems? What are some of the words you use that make you feel that way? Huff, uh, suffered and heart sick. He suffered. There was heartbreak. Recklessness. Recklessness. Perfect. Okay. That, that's the answer to that question right there. Okay. And see how they turned out. Okay. The highlight caught my attention. See how it is. Odysseus is traveling back home through the seas after exploring the capital of the Troads, Troy. He has to face many obstacles and won't stop fighting, even though he won't be free of trials. Concise, to the point, very nice. Okay. All right, I'm going to collect that from you here in just a minute, and that will uh, be um, where I can give you a little feedback on it. Okay. Uh, that lesson completed. Uh, I'll find out if the objectives were met when I collect their objective summaries on the cards, uh, on the few I read. It looks like there were, but there's room for feedback. Uh, I would not have changed anything else in that lesson other than having my index cards passed out before we got to that point. Um, but the kids worked well, interacted well with each other, engaged with each other, and the conversations were rich. So that lesson accomplished what I hoped it would.